بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم آم خضر چکتائی این یو آر واچنگ مائی یوٹیوب چینل خضر چکتائی اسکول آف ایڈوانس کیمسٹری ٹوڈے آئی ایم گوئنگ ٹو ایکسپلین اینڈ آئی ایم گوئنگ ٹو اسٹارٹ اے سیشن دیٹ از اباؤٹ دا ٹیپیکل کویشچنس اباؤٹ او لیول کیمسٹری پی ٹو دیز کویشچنس آر ٹیکن فرام دا پاس پیپر ہسٹری اینڈ آئی ایم گوئنگ ٹو ایکسپلین فرسٹ آف آل دا چیپٹر نمبر ون آر دا کویشچن نمبر ون یو کین سی اینڈ دین آئی ول ٹرائی ٹو ایکسپلین دا نیکسٹ کویشچن دیٹ از فرام بارننگ اینڈ اسٹرکچر If you are new to my channel, then please subscribe, share, like, and hit the bell icon for the next incoming notifications. Now, at the moment, here is a question that is question number one, and uh, I'm going to explain that is a typical question that is having the multiple options. How can we solve this sort of question? Let's see over here. In this question, that is the question number one, sometime we are given organic compounds, sometime inorganic compounds, sometime elements, and so on. For example, calcium oxide, carbon monoxide, copper two oxide, nitrogen dioxide, nitrogen monoxide, silicon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, water, and so on. So these are the typical inorganic compounds. Same is the case, aluminum chloride, ammonium chloride, calcium chloride, hydrogen chloride, iron-3, that is a transition element, iron-3 chloride, silver chloride, sodium chloride. Then butane, butanoic acid, and some sort of stuff like that. And similarly, some type of the pure elements are there. Aluminium, argon, copper, iodine, iron, lead, magnesium, nitrogen, oxygen, and sulfur, and so on. Let's talk about the typical questions. Question number one. Here, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, H. There are the almost eight different options. A is a carboxylic acid. B is an alcohol. C is chlorofluorocarbon. D is a hydrocarbon. F is a sort of uh, hydrochlorofluorocarbon. It's not a hydro, I mean, it's not a typical chlorofluorocarbon. And uh, in this case, this is, this G is alcohol. B is alcohol, D is hydrocarbon once again, F is an ester, and H is again an ester, and so on. So, uh, what is the basic question? Let's see and how to solve this one. Give the letter of the compound, which is CFCs. CFCs are the basic questions, and so on. CFC mean chlorofluorocarbons, right? Chlorofluorocarbons are the compound which contains only three elements, carbon, chlorine, and fluorine. These are said to be the chlorofluorocarbons. So C is the correct option in this case. C is the correct option. You can see it over here. This one that is having chlorine, F, and two carbons, so it's uh, chlorofluorocarbons. And I'm going to write this one. C is the answer, is the latter, that is the accurate answer in this case. The next one is propanoic acid. Propanoic acid means it, uh, it should have three carbon atom and carboxylic acid, that is a, over here. This is the carboxylic acid, or the carboxylic group, you can see. And it's overall having three carbons. So it is said to be the propanoic acid, and A is the correct option. The third one, that should be the propyl ethanoate. So uh, it's an ester, F. Here is another ester, that is H. And there must be the propyl. Propyl means uh, if I'm going to cut this molecule into two half, then the one half should have both oxygen, and other half must have no oxygen. The half that is having no oxygen is written with the name that is YL, and uh, the other half that is having both oxygen, it is written with the name OATE. So its name is propyl, I mean three carbons are there, so it is propyl, and there are two carbons, so it is ethanoate. So its correct option, F option, and it is said to be propyl ethanoate, so F letter is the correct option answer an option. 
fourth one, can be oxidized to ethanoic acid. So you know, we know uh, that alcohol is oxidized or sometimes aldehydes are oxidized to make the carboxylic acid, but aldehydes are not in your syllabus, that is 5070 O-level chemistry. So one and only that should be the alcohol and it must have two carbon. Eth mean two carbons. It must have two carbon. Alcohol with the two carbon, his is the alcohol with the two carbon and you can see it over here. So uh, G is the correct option in this case. Give the letter of the two compounds that react together to make an ester. You know two basic functional groups, those are essential to make the ester are carboxylic acid and alcohol or sometimes you can say the carbonyl uh, an acid chloride and an alcohol. In this case, uh, one should be the acid, other one should be the alcohol. Two alcohols are there. You can write A and B. This is the B1. Or you can also write A or G. I mean, these two compounds can react together to make an ester. So that was a typical question from the organic chemistry. There is another question. That is this one, in which uh, he is asking about the organic polymers, basically. Uh, polymer B, polymer C. Polymer B is uh, basically an imide polymer. Polymer B is the uh, an addition polymer, that is the hydrocarbon. Polymer C, in case uh, you can say that, uh, polymer C is the hydrocarbon. Polymer D and so on, there are the different polymers. Or if I'm having, I think, uh, I am missing this one. Let's suppose this is a polymer A. Polymer A is a polymer B, polymer C, polymer D, E, and F, yes. So each polymer can be used once, more than once, and or not at all. Which two polymers are polyesters? You know what are the polyesters? They are having this linkage. C, O, C, O. O, C, O. This linkage is basically the indication of ester or the polyester or the ester linkage. So in this case, we can see that uh, in this case, there are the two compounds and other one is uh, over here. Anyone, any other one, if I'm not having or having, one is this one, ester. And as far as my options are concerned, there is no other polyester. I think by default, I have not the other option. Uh, I might be missing it. So I'm at the moment, I can write the C is the only option that is the polymeric one. The next one is which polymer is used to make both cling film and plastic bags. And that is this one, cling film, film and plastic bag, that is the polyethene. And you can write the polymer B. Give the letter of addition polymers. Once again, the addition polymers is the B1. And again, this, again, this is also an example of the addition polymerization. Once again, you, you can see over here, any sort of polymer that is not having OCO and it is not having OCN, if these two groups are missing in any sort of polymerization, as far as O-level chemistry is concerned, it means that you are uh, having addition polymerization. So addition polymerization is over here. And the, there are the two options. One is the B1, and the next one is the F polymer, as far as the options, given options are concerned at the moment. Give the letter of the polymer that is saturated hydrocarbons. Saturated hydrocarbon, once again, it's the B1. It's a hydrocarbon. It's having carbon, carbon, and hydrogen. I mean, hydrocarbon is a compound that is having only two elements. One should be the carbon. Other one should be the hydrogen. So uh, it's you can say that uh, the polymer that is hydrocarbon, saturated hydrocarbon is B. Uh, sorry for that, I missed that. Give the letter of the condensation polymers. Condensation polymers are the typical polymers having again O, C, O. O, C, O bond are linkages, are O double bond C and N, this one linkages. So uh, as far as my recent options are concerned, I'm having at the moment, that is the G1 as the condensation polymerization or the polymer. And uh, again, D, even D is the condensation polymer. C is the condensation polymer. And A is the condensation polymer. But 
this polymer E is not the condensation. I mean, uh, addition polymerization, uh, the polymers, those are addition polymers are polymer E, polymer F, and polymer B. These three are the addition polymers, and rest of all other options are condensation polymers. So you can write C over here, you can write A over here, you can write uh, even D over here, and G over here, and so on. The last one, which polymer could be the part of protein? So it might have or it must have amino acids. So uh, you can see that, you can check it over here. If I'm going to break the, uh, this linkage that is said to be the peptide linkage, <clears throat> and I'm having, once again, I'm going to break different peptide or amide linkage, roughly you can see that, and you will see that you are having these two different monomers. You are having these two different repeating units, so it means that they are amino acid. You can see it, this is the structure of a typical, normal, general amino acid. And same is the case with this one, with the two different uh, boxes, and it is uh, the representation of the different longest chain. So uh, the protein is polymer G, basically. This is the protein, and it is having polypeptide. It, it is said to be the polypeptide. The next one question is about inorganic compounds, or you can say uh, the typical compounds, ionic compounds, calcium oxide, carbon dioxide, that is not the uh, inorganic compound, you can say, or it is not the ionic compound, copper 2 oxide, silicon dioxide, sodium oxide, sulfur oxide, again, it's a covalent one, sulfur trioxide is a covalent one, I mean, zinc oxide, sodium oxide, uh, copper oxide and the calcium oxide. These four oxides are basically ionic compound. The rest of oxides, those are carbon uh, dioxide, silicon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, and sulfur trioxide. These are covalent compounds. Now, let's see what are in the options. Each oxide can be uh, used once or more than once or not at all. Which oxide has the giant covalent structure. So in this case, the giant structure goes to, it must be uh, the macromolecular structure. I mean, it must be a covalent compounds. And these are the covalent compounds, you know, which one is having giant covalent or giant molecular structure or macromolecular structure, you can say that is silicon dioxide. SiO2 is the, I mean, you can write the name as well silicon dioxide. It's a uh, um, molecule, it's a compound that is having giant covalent structure. Option B, react with both acid and alkalis. So it should be the amphoteric. In your syllabus, there are three amphoteric oxide. Number one, aluminum oxide. Number two, lead oxide. Number three, zinc oxide. So in this case, you can see that here is the zinc oxide that is an amphoteric oxide that is zinc oxide, it can react with acid and with alkalis as well. The C1 is react with the water to form a strong acid. So uh, it must be the non-metallic oxide, and here it is sulfur dioxide. It may be sulfur trioxide. You can say the stronger acid, you can say it goes to the sulfur trioxide. When sulfur trioxide is allowed to react with the water, it is going to make H2SO4. And when you are going to dissolve SO2, I mean sulfur dioxide, it is going to make H2SO3. So the appropriate option, as far as my opinion is concerned, is sulfur trioxide. Is sulfur trioxide and so on. Contain a cation with a charge of one positive ion. So there must be a cation, a positive ion, who's having one positive charge. In this case, you can see that here is this one, sodium oxide, and formula of the sodium oxide is Na2O. So I'm going to find out their oxygen state, and that is also the uh, charge on the metal line as well, minus two, and plus two for two sodium, and for one sodium, it will be plus one. So in case of metal, the oxygen state is also equal to charge on them. So here is the correct option, that is so DM oxide. Here is the sodium oxide and so on.
Okay. The next one is Now come to the next one. Question number one once again is a colorless solid B A B C D E are the options. Uh, and the options are ammonium chloride, calcium chloride, carbon tetrachloride, copper two chloride, hydrogen chloride, magnesium chloride, and zinc chloride. Is a colored solid, sorry, not colorless, it's a colored solid. So it must be a transition metal compound. It must be a transition metal compound. How many transition metal compounds are there? There's one and only, that is this one. Copper two chloride, as far as my consideration is concerned, yes. So answer, the appropriate answer is copper two chloride. Option B, react with warm aqueous sodium hydroxide to produce a gas that turns damn litmus paper blue. So it must be a gas that is going to be formed with sodium hydroxide and it is changing that turns damn litmus paper blue. Here is a typical compound that is ammonium chloride. This is going to react with the sodium hydroxide. I'm going to write equation over here. NH4Cl, when it is allowed to react with sodium hydroxide under warm conditions, there is the reaction, I mean, from this NH4, HCl is going to react with NOH. HCl from this compound is going to react with this NOH to make H2O NaCl, and rest of the portion from this ammonium chloride will remain undetected that is said to be ammonia and it is in form of a gas. So ammonia gas is given off whenever you are going to react ammonium compound, ammonium sulfate, ammonium nitrate, ammonium chloride with a sodium hydroxide or any sort of other alkali you can say. And that th this gas is going to turn, going to change red litmus paper blue. So the compound is ammonium. Ammonium chloride. C1, react with water to form a strong acid. Which one is the compound that is a strong reaction with the water? I mean, it is highly soluble in water and it is going to give the strong acid. That is HCl, hydrogen chloride. If the hydrogen chloride gas is allowed to dissolve into the water, it goes to the water to make H positive ion and Cl negative ion. And you know the H positive ion uh, is the indication of acidic solution. So react with the water to form a strong acid is hydrogen, hydrogen chloride. The next one is contain a cation with the charge of one positive ion. So once again, uh, let's see over here, it's a calcium, I mean it's belonging to the group two and it is having plus two charge, it cannot be the answer. Uh, it's a covalent one, it cannot be the option, it's a copper two, I mean, wrong option, it's a covalent compounds. Magnesium is the ionic compound, it might have the positive ion, and uh, it will have the positive ion, but again, it belongs to the group two, so it will have positive two. Zinc has the fixed positive ion or oxidation state, that is plus two. So the last, uh, the, and the final option goes to ammonium ion, that is having one positive charge on it. So ammonium chloride, once again, is the answer that is said to be ammonium chloride. Its formula is NH4 positive, Cl negative, and that is having one positive charge. So answer is ammonium chloride, ammonium chloride. Has a simple black hole structure similar to that of methane. I mean, what is the structure of methane? The structure of methane is like this one, right? I mean, carbon is at the center and four atoms are surrounding that carbon. So in this case, you can see carbon tetrachloride. Carbon tetrachloride, the structure is CCl, 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 and CCl. So it is having close resemblance with the methane. So the option is carbon tetrachloride and so on. Now come toward the next one. In this question, argon, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, ethane, hydrogen, methane, neon, ozone, sulfur dioxide, and sulfur trioxide are the options. 
Each gas can be used once, more than once, or not at all. Which gas is used to manufacture margarine? As a typical question, I mean, hydrogen is added into the, I mean, uh, oil, and it is changed into the margarine. So it's a typical one, and that is a learning-based question, a typical question. So answer is hydrogen. Is used as a food preservative. And you know, sulfur dioxide, once again, a learning-based question, sulfur dioxide is used as a food preservative. Sulfur dioxide. Has a molecule that contains only eight atoms. So you have to check the formula of all these options, and uh, especially for the compound. Is AR argon, CO2 for carbon dioxide, CO for carbon monoxide, ethane, C2H6, C2H6. So 2 plus 6 is equal to 8. So here is the option. Uh, has the molecule that contains 8 atoms in this case. It is uh, ethene. I mean, that is the easier one. It's a form from the bacterial decay of the vegetable matter. Once again, that is a learning-based question, and it's uh, uh, methane. It's a methane. Methane is formed by the bacterial decay of the vegetable matter. It's methane. It's formed in photochemical smoke. There are, I mean, so many options. It may be formed in a photochemical smoke, and uh, you can say that there are the two uh, the main typical options. Which one can be formed from the photochemical smoke? Please let me know. D. Let me know which type of option is the correct one for the photochemical smoke. Quickly, please. Let me know from the message section. Quickly, please. Quickly, quickly. G. G plus, please let me know. <clears throat> Which gas might be present in the photochemical smoke? It's a typical one. Basically, nitrogen oxides may be in the present, may present in the photochemical smoke. Ozone may be present in the photochemical uh, smoke. And uh, sometimes the volcanic organic compounds, I mean, sometimes you can say the sulfur dioxide as well. So optimum or the appropriate option is the ozone. Ozone, nitrogen dioxides, I mean oxide of the nitrogen, and so on. Completely combust to form only a gas that turns lime water milky. That is again a typical one. Please let, let me know what is the answer of this option. It's a typical gas that turns lime water milky. The one and only gas in this option that can turn lime water milky. Please let me know quickly why you are reluctant to send me the messages. Okay. This is basically carbon dioxide, CO2, carbon di oxide. Carbon dioxide is the gas that turns lime water milky and so on. Come toward the next one. In this case, ammonia, carbon dioxide, chlorine, butane, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, propane, sulfur dioxide and so on. Each gas can be used once, more than once or not at all. Which gas burn in air to give only water? Once again, this is a typical and the easiest one uh, question. Water, as you know, is a combination of hydrogen and oxygen. 
What do you mean by air? Burning in air means there is only one gas in air that can burn, that is oxygen. So the other option should be hydrogen. Other option should be hydrogen. The B1, it is used to kill bacteria in the purification of water for domestic use. So again, it's a typical question. It is a use of, I mean, chlorine, and you will write chlorine. C, has the molecule containing only 11 atoms. Once again, I'm going to write uh, the formula of these compounds, NH3, CO2, Cl2, and uh, butane, C4, H10, and uh, hydrogen, H2, N2, O2, C3, H8, and SO2. So the molecule which is having 11 atom is the propane. Propane. D1 occupies 78% by the volume of dry air. One second, the very much typical and easiest question is this one. That is nitrogen. Nitrogen. E is released when the calcium hydroxide is added to the soil and contain the fertilizer ammonium nitrate. Once again, as I have told you very much recently, when ammonium salt, ammonium nitrate, ammonium sulfate, ammonium chloride is allowed to, to react with the calcium hydroxide or any sort of alkali, there is the formation of a typical gas, one, I mean salt and water. Water, salt, gas, water, salt, gas. So the gas will be ammonia gas and here it is. ammonia gas and so on the next one question is about the element calcium br cl cl again uh, these are the two isotopes you can say copper sodium neon oxygen and here are two negative ions one is o2 negative one and other one is cl negative one once again, option A, which particle has only 20 protons in its nucleus? 20 protons mean atomic number, that is this one. Calcium, and I am going to write over here, calcium 20 and 39 over here. Which particle has the nucleon number of 35? So, what is the nucleon number? Uh, that the huge number, the larger number uh, that is present on the symbol is said to be the number of nucleons or atomic mass or the mass number and so on. So which one is this one, nuclear number for the CL, it's having 35 and 17 is its atomic number. Which particle has electronic structure of 288, mean it is having 2 plus 8 plus 8, it is overall having 18 electrons. Which one is having 18 electrons? Please let me know quickly. Which one is having 18 electron? In all these options, you can see that. Uh, 20 electrons, 17 plus 1, 18 electron, 29 electrons, 10 electrons, 8 plus 2, 10 electrons, 8 electron, 11, 17 electrons, 17 and 35. So accurate option is over here, that is Cl negative ion and here is 17 and 37. Which particle is an atom with only 10 neutron in its nucleus? Uh, which particle is an atom with only 10 neutron its nucleus? So now at the moment, you will uh, subtract these two numbers. I mean 79 minus 35, higher from, higher minus lower, and so on. Where is the answer that is equal to 10 neutron? In this case, you can say 20 minus 10, that is equal to 10. So neon is the correct option. And it is having 10 neutron in its nucleus, 10 and 20 over here. Which particle is an atom of the transition metal? Very much easy and I mean the easiest one. As far as my opinion is concerned, my memory is concerned, uh, you are having copper, iron, and uh, typically uh, you can say the iron two positive, iron three positive, copper two positive. These are overall and uh, you can say the manganese, and uh, chromium. Overall, these five or four, you can say, these are the typical transition metal. Those are included in your syllabus. So in this case, this is the copper one, and Cu uh, 29 and 64 over here. That is the correct and accurate option. Now come toward the next one question. 
Ammonia, argon, CO2, chlorine, ethane, nitrogen, and so on. Question number one, option number one, forms approximately 1% of the air. That is, let me know. Okay. Number two, bleaches dam litmus paper. That is a specific test, typical property of the chlorine that bleaches the dam litmus paper. So, chlorine is the correct option. Red with water to form an alkaline solution. Ammonia. It reacts with water to make ammonium hydroxide. That is an alkaline solution. None of the other option is the correct one. I mean the one only option that is ammonia. Ammonia. It's a gas. It's an alkaline gas. It is said to be the gaseous hydride. The only gaseous hydride in your syllabus that is going to dissolve into the water and making the solution alkaline. Just keep in your mind can undergo polymerization. So it should be uh, an alkene or it should be a carboxylic acid or it should be the alcohol, it should be an amine and so on. And here we are uh, ethene. So ethene can be polymerized to give the addition polymerization. Carboxylic acid can, can give the condensation polymerization. Alcohols, diamine can also give the condensation, polymerization. These are the other possible options you can say. So in this case, ethene is the correct option. The next one is, is the compound formed in atmosphere as a result of lightning activity. That is the typical one once again, and it's nitrogen. Nitrogen is formed as a result of lightning activity. F is a diatomic molecule containing a total 16 electron. Once again, you can guess it yourself. That is having 16 electron and it uh, is the diatomic. Mean its formula must having the two. I like Cl2, Br2, I2, H2 and so on. And in this case, where is the two? Here is N2S and uh, Cl2 and there is no two, no two. I mean, there is no diatomic state. Uh, O2 and SO3. So oxygen, nitrogen, Cl2, N. So which one is the correct option? I mean, its uh, atomic number should be equal to 8, right? Because 8 plus 8 is equal to 16. So oxygen is the correct option in this case. The next one is, again, I mean, these are the most repeated questions. Uh, about the elements, especially about the organic compound, about the cholin, cholin compound, and so on. In this question, the option number one is, has an ion which in aqueous solution react with aqueous sodium hydroxide to give red-brown precipitate. Who is going to react? Who is going to react with the sodium hydroxide? Has an ion, its ion, I mean the ion of this element is going to react in form of solution with a sodium hydroxide to give the red brown precipitate. There is a one only, one only, uh, the option is iron 3, iron 3 hydroxide, the one and only option that can give or its hydroxide is reddish brown in color. So in this case, iron is the correct option. I mean, if the iron solution of the iron 3 positive ion is allowed to treat uh, react with the sodium hydroxide, it will make reddish brown precipitate and so on. The B1 is, has an atom with electronic configuration with only five occupied electron shells. And now come toward this one and let me know what are their atomic numbers and then I'm going to write its electronic configuration. Uh, excuse me, I'm not having the data booklet at the moment. Let me check from the data booklet. Okay, aluminium is having 13 atomic number, argon is having 18, carbon is equal to 6, copper, copper, copper is having 27, iodine is having, where is the iodine, is having 53, iron <clears throat> 26, and the lead is the, where is the lead, here is the lead, oh, it's 82, Magnesium is 12, 
nitrogen is having 7, oxygen 8, and sulfur is having 16. So the once again the question is, ha, has an atom with electronic configuration with only 5 occupied electron shell. So it means that it may have K, L, M, N, and O. So an atom with electronic configuration with only five occupied electron shells, so it must have the maximum number of electrons and maximum atomic number, you can say. So I'm going to uh, write, first of all, with the iron. It's having two electrons, eight electron. Remaining electrons are 28 minus, let me see over here. Uh, 28 minus, sorry, 26 minus, 6 minus 10, 16 electron. So again, 8 electrons and uh, minus 8, having 8 electron. So it is not going to fulfill the 5 occupied electron shells. So it must be more than that of this one, and it may be the, uh, it may not be the copper, and it may be in the next uh, period. You can say there is an other option, there is an other way out to find this question. See uh, which one is present in period number four from the periodic table, you can see it. The next one is the easiest one as far as my opinion is concerned. So which element is lying in period uh, five? One, two, three, four, and five. Which one is lying in period five that is in this option? You can say argon, copper, iodine. Where is the iodine? One, two, three, four, five. Yes, iodine. And iodine is the correct option. Iodine. So there are two basic options, two basic way out. Either we can write the electronic configuration or we can check directly from the periodic table. Here is the product table and you can see it, you can consult it. It must have, uh, it must be in the fifth period and so on. The next one is an oxide which decolorizes acidified potassium dichromate. It's a typical one I think and uh, oxide of the sulfur that is uh, going to behave as a reducing ag agent and it will decolorize acidified potassium dichromate. So it's a sulfur one has a sulfate which is insoluble in water. Sulfate that is insoluble in water. There are the two or three basic sulfate as far as your uh, level is concerned. Calcium sulfate is sparingly soluble. Barium sulfate is uh, insoluble. And PBSO4 that is said to be the lead sulfate that is also insoluble into the water. So in this case, lead is having a sulfate that will be insoluble into the water and so on. The next one is to provide an inert atmosphere for the extraction of reactive metal. The inert atmosphere means an inert gas should be there, that is the argon one. And once again, the option is argon. The last one, it makes ammonia when it is warm with aqueous mixture of sodium nitrate and sodium hydroxide. Sodium nitrate and sodium hydroxide when meet together in the presence of uh, aluminium, that's a typical question, or the typical test for the nitrate ions. So aluminium must be there, then nitrate ion in the presence of NaOH, they will give ammonia gas. And H3 gas is going to form only in case of aluminium. So aluminium is essential for this test. This is a typical test for the nitrate negative ions. So I'm going to write aluminium. So these are the typical questions. Uh, those are going to appear as a question number one in your past paper history. Now I'm going to switch towards the next option, next portion, uh, that is basically bonding and structure. See, now I'm going to explain bonding and structure questions.
the most oftenly asked questions are about physical properties, about difference of the melting and boiling point, and so on. Physical properties are the properties, those are associated with the physical aspect, with the physical phenomena. For example, it may be the melting and boiling point, and melting and boiling that is counted as a one physical property. This next one is the density, electrical conductivity, I mean solid, molten, and aqueous state, uh, which compound is going to conduct electricity, and so on. The next one is the appearance. Appearance means it must have the physical state. What is its physical state? Is it liquid, it's solid, or the gas? And what is its color? I mean, it's a grayish solid is the appearance. Physical state plus color. The next one is the volatility that is only applicable for the liquids. The next one is the hardness is only applicable for the solids. Same is the case, other one is malleability that is true for the metals. Ductility, it's about metal. And solubility of different compounds, different covalent compounds like HCl, like all acids, and they may be water soluble. And most of the ionic compounds like NaCl, like MgCl2, and so on, like all nitrates, like bicarbonates, they are water soluble. So these are the typical physical properties, and so on. The next one is basically, the reason for the melting and boiling point, the basic reason is going to be half on the structure and bonding. So uh, what is the structure? Just try to search it out, the difference between the structures and the difference between the bonding. On behalf of structure and bonding difference, you can explain why a typical one, a typical compound, a typical element, a special element is going to show high melting point or it is showing to, uh, going to show low melting point. If there is no difference between the structure and bonding, if there is no difference between structure and bonding, then you will switch toward the next phenomena, that is strength of the bonding. This postulate is specially considered for ionic compounds, for metallic compounds, or metallics, I mean for metals. So, for if you are going to compare an ionic compound, two ionic compound, and uh, they are having the same structure, I mean giant structure, they are having the same bonding, I mean ionic bonding. Now, what is the reason behind it? They are going to show the different melting and different boiling point. Then you will search the strength of the bonding. Which one is having more stronger ionic bond, and which one is having less stronger ionic bond, and so on. Once again, structure may be of two types. It may be the simple structure, it may be the giant structure. And bonding, as you know, there is the typical one, covalent bonding, ionic bonding, metallic bonding. Some other bondings are there, they are said to be intermolecular forces. If you are talking about and if you are going to search for the reason of non-metallic species, for non-metallic, I mean covalent compound like uh, NH3, like O2, and so on, then you will switch from step number one to directly step number three. Now you will search, you will write your answer with respect to the strength of intermolecular forces. I mean H2O is having high boiling point then as compared to NH3. Its simplest answer as far as O-level chemistry students are concerned, its simplest answer is it's having, it's, uh, having strong intermolecular forces. It is, it's having strong intermolecular forces as compared to that of NH3. And same is the case with alcohol, same is the case for other organic compounds, other covalent compounds as well. For example, uh, I'm going to compare NaCl versus Cl2. So the answer is going to be <clears throat> uh, on behalf of structure and bonding. These both species are having different structure. These both species are having different bondings. So this uh, NaCl is having ionic bonding and it is having giant ionic structure. Ionic bonding and giant ionic structure. This Cl2 is having covalent or it is, I mean, covalent molecule and it is a simple structure. It's a small covalent that is more accurate method, small covalent, right, small, word small, small covalent molecule, and it is having simple molecular structure. So uh, it's the, here is the clear indication that the ionic compounds and having giant structure, 
they will demand more energy or they will require more heat to melt it down. As compared to this one, and uh, as you know, it's a simple covalent molecule and it is having the simple structure and it is the reasoning of intermolecular forces. It has weak intermolecular forces. The shortcut is IMF. You are supposed to write the whole word. Intermolecular forces, if the intermolecular forces are in comparison with the ionic bonding, if they are in comparison with the metallic bonding, if they are in comparison with the macromolecular structure, so they are the poor one, they are the weaker one. So uh, these are the typical, I mean, a style, uh, you can say the typical points to report your answer regarding melting and boiling point. There is another competition between iron and sodium. Now, these two, both species, these two, both elements are belonging to the metals. They both are metal. I mean, they are having same structure. They are having giant metallic structure, giant metallic structure. This sodium is also having giant metallic structure. It's having, this iron is having metallic bond in it. This sodium is also having metallic bond in it. So there is no clear difference between the structure and the bonding. Next one, I'm going to switch toward the strength of metallic bonding. So as you know, iron is the typical transition element. It's having higher density. It's the harder, it's the stronger and so on. So this iron is having strong, you will write, it has strong metallic bonds as compared to the sodium. As compared to sodium, it is having strong metallic bond. The next one, you can write, it has more delocalized electron. It can three electrons per atom for the delocalization. It is having three positive ions. Sodium can delocalize only one electron. It is having only one positive charge. The third one you can also report uh, if it is not beyond to your syllabus. That is uh, iron three, the size of iron three ion is smaller. Size of iron three is smaller as compared to the size of sodium positive ion. So smaller the size of positive ion, stronger the metallic bond and so on. Storing stronger the metallic lattice and so on. So these are the typical points uh, that you can use for the reasoning of melting and boiling point. The next one is the representation. You should be able to draw the dot and cross diagram for ionic compounds, for covalent compounds. And uh, metallic bonding diagram should be there. I think you are very much fa familiar how to draw the metallic bonding diagram and so on. The last one is the typical diagram that is again one of the most oftenly asked questions that is alloy structure diagram. And uh, you can, uh, you should be able to uh, draw the structure of an alloy and you should be able to explain what is the difference between the uh, size or the atomic size or the ionic size and why these structure, these, uh, this sort of arrangement is not allowing the layers to slip to the each other. And uh, the alloy one is the typical uh, having hard, hardness and the brittleness and so on. Now I'll come towards the different typical past paper questions. It's May June 16, question paper 2-1. Magnesium reacted with the sulfur to make ionic compound magnesium sulfide. Predict two physical properties of the magnesium sulfide. As you know, ionic compounds and ionic compound have the typical properties. Number one, they are solid at room temperature. And the physical state is a white solid, you can say. It is high melting point and boiling point. It, they are uh, poor conductivity in solid state, but they are good con conductor in aqueous or molten state. So I'm going to write they are solid at room temperature. Or you can write high melting point high melting point and the boiling point. The next one is poor or the non-conductor, you can say, non-conductor in solid state and so on. So these are the appropriate options. Explain in terms of electron how magnesium atom react with sulfur atom to make a magnesium ion and sulfide ion. So you can see over here, I'm going to write the first one. This is MGS. First of all, I'm going to examine this MGS. 
which uh, species having what number of oxygen state are the charge. In this case, you can see that it's having minus two charge. It's having plus two charge. So it means that one magnesium is losing two electron. One magnesium is losing two electron. I'm going to write it over here. One magnesium atom, you can say, is losing two electrons. And similarly, one sulfur molecule, pure sulfur is a molecule. Just keep in your mind, one sulfur molecule is gaining, accepting two electrons. As a result, magnesium get two positive charge, sulfur get minus two, and ions attract each other to make a giant lattice. So this is a typical one, and it is the easiest one you can say. Just first I'm going to examine uh, how many positive and negative charges are there as compared to, or you can say the per one atom of metal, per one atom of the non-metal and so on. The next one is uh, June 17, question paper 2-1. Calcium chloride is an ionic compound. State the electronic configuration of the each ions in the calcium chloride. Calcium ion, chloride ion and so on. In this case, calcium ion, as you know, calcium is having 20 electrons and calcium ion mean it is having 2 plus charge. So 2 plus charge mean now it is having 18 electron. It's 2, 8, 8. So the electronic configuration is 2, 8, 8 that is equal to 18. In case of chloride, you know that Cl, the normal Cl is having 17 electron. You can check it from the data booklet from the periodic table. And if it is having one negative ion, so it is having 18 electron. Again, you are going to write 2, 8, 8, and so on. The next one is explain using idea about the structure and bonding why calcium chloride has high melting point. Now, this is the typical question, I mean, general question. It is not in comparison with any other sort of uh, element, sort of compound, and so on. So, the typical reason is once again structure and bonding. Calcium chloride is having strong, word strong is important, ionic bonds in its lattice and its structure is, this was the bonding and now I am going to explain structure, its structure is giant ionic. So high amount of heat is required, amount of heat is required to melt it down and so on. So now you have a justification for the two marks, number one, you are uh, going to explain strong ionic bond, there's a one mark, and the second mark is for the giant ionic structure, giant ionic lattice, and resultantly, consequently, finally, conclusively, you are going to write high amount of heat is required as a result, and so this is the typical reason you can say it. Now come toward the next one. Silicon is a non-metal found in group four of the product table. Silicon is manufactured by the reduction of silicon oxide with the carbon. What is the maximum mass? Unfortunately, there is a stoichiometric question. Let's solve it. Uh, what is the maximum mass of the silicon that can be made from 300 gram of the silicon dioxide? Once again, the equation is given, and I am going to use my rule, that is unitary method or unitary rule. Uh, put equal over here, and the species that is going to be found is uh, silicon. I'm going to write silicon over here. And the reference species, the reference compound that is given, uh, that is SiO2. According to the balanced chemical equation, I'm going to write these two answers from this equation. 
let's see over here what is the atomic number of the silicon. You can check it from the periodic table. It's 28. 28 plus 2 oxygen. I mean, just give me a minute. 28 plus 2 oxygen, that is equal to 32. And its answer is 60. So 60 gram of the silicon oxide is going to react. And as a result of this reaction, 28 gram of the silicon is going to be formed. So uh, silicon is equal to 28 gram that is going to form as a result of if you are going to use 60 gram of silicon oxide. In this case, uh, you can write if you are using 1 gram of SiO2, this is said to be unitary method, then what should be the answer of silicon? It will be 28 over 60. And if I am using 300 gram of silicon oxide, then what will be the answer with respect to 300? 28 over 60 into 300. And its answer will be, uh, just a minute. One forty. So one forty gram. If I'm not wrong, one forty gram is the mass of silicon that can be made as a result of this reaction. Once again, silicon has a giant molecular structure, suggests so two physical properties of the silicon. Once again, it's a giant structure. It means that all elements, all compounds, those that are having giant structure, they will have high melting point, high boiling point high density and so on. So high melting and high boiling point, anything and boiling that is one and the same thing. The next one is high density. You can also write this is a, a semiconductor of electric current. And so on. Now I'll come to the next one. Uh, these are the physical properties, this one, I mean melting point, density, conductivity, physical state, color, and so on. The next one is silane has the molecular formula SiH4. Draw a dot and plot diagram for the silane. You only need to draw the outer shell electrons. So first of all, as far as my method is concerned, I'm going to draw uh, a structure that is the said to be the Lewis structure or this one line structure. It's a Lewis diagram that is having simple covalent bonds. So in this case, I'm going to report again it over here. I am going to give dot for the electron of the silicons and cross for the electrons of the hydrogens. I am going to write this picture, this diagram over here once again, silicon. Silicons, one electron, second electron, third electron, and four electron. There are four electrons participation from the silicon side, and each hydrogen is contributing only one electron, only one electron, only one, only one. And simply speaking, I'm not drawing any sort of circles, and I'm going to erase these bonds. I'm just eliminating, er erasing these lines, so we can write silicon cross hydrogen dot cross silicon hydrogen silicon dot cross hydrogen, silicon dot cross hydrogen, and it is the exactly true one. Again, using the idea about bonding and structure, structure and bonding suggest why silane has low boiling point. Now it's having low boiling point. First of all, you can see that it's a covalent molecule. It is a simple molecule. It is having, I mean, the countable number of silicon and hydrogen atoms. So it is simple or uh, small, simple, small covalent molecule and it's having weak intermolecular forces So less energy is required to melt it down or boil it. Energy is required to boil it. That is the appropriate and accurate option. The next one. Titanium is the metallic element. Suggest one property of the titanium. Now let's see from the product table. 
is it in the line of transition element yes it is lying in the line of transition element and uh, it's belonging to the 1 2 3 4 period so the one physical property is i mean high melting point high boiling point and high density once again high density because it's a transition element you know high melting point high boiling point and so on titanium chloride is a colorless liquid that has low boiling point it's a colorless liquid and it is having low boiling point suggests the structure and bonding of the tcl4 dekhi here is the indication colorless liquid it's a liquid it's a metal and non metal are going to make a compound but it is a liquid ionic compounds are not liquid at the room temperature just remember that and it is having low boiling point and simply it means it structure is covalent it's a small simple covalent molecule this is a typical word small simple covalent molecule that is tcl4 the next one is titanium chloride react with water to form hydrochloric acid and a precipitate of titanium 4 this is the four roman word roman words roman counting you can say uh, that is equal to titanium 4 oxide so i am going to construct the equation and uh, uh, tiscl4 including state symbols it's a liquid you can say when it is allowed to react with water H2O, it's again liquid, state symbol are essential to mention over here because it's of two mark question. And now it's going to make to form HCl, H and Cl, I mean HCl and uh, it should be 4 HCl, I'm going to add 2 over here, plus it should be titanium 4 oxide, titanium 4 oxide. Uh, what is the titanium 4 oxide formula? You can say Ti, it's having 4 positive oxide is having minus 2 or 2 minus so 1 and 2 1 over here 2 over here so its formula will be TiO2 TiO2 that is the final formula of titanium oxide or titanium 4 oxide and here is the typical question and this must be the balanced one and it's the balanced chemical equation and so on the next one is silver is a transition element with the proton number 47 Use the product table to state the number of occupied electron shell in one in an atom of the silver. So once again, I am going to search in which period it's lying. It's lying in one, two, three, four, five, fifth period. So five outer shell or five electron shells are there. Electron shells. Describe with the aid of a diagram a metallic bonding silver. This is a typical diagram. You will write first of all the positive ion in a, I mean very much uniform way. A layer of positive ion, one layer of positive ion, here is the second layer of positive ion, second layer of positive ion and you may draw third and fourth as well. With the closest boundaries and closest uh, proximity of these metal ions. Number one, you can write its layer one it's layer 2 and so on and here are randomly moving freely moving c of free delocalized electron c of delocalized electron so uh, layered structure you will explain the layered structure and uh, free moving or uh, you can say mobile electrons or you can say the C of mobile electrons. <clears throat> the next one is the, I mean, uh, metallic lattice is over here. Metallic lattice is over here. As far as my opinion is concerned, metallic lattice and so on. However, I think it's, uh, oh no, it's correct. It's a solid at room temperature. So layers, free moving electron, metallic layers, layers of static positive ion static positive ions so these are the major typical points and so on the last question of the day and then we will meet on the 
on next day on at the same time and so on excuse me I think it's enough for today and uh, see you tomorrow at the same time for the next typical question. Have a nice day. Thank you very much and Allah Hafiz.